You're going to be seeing a uh, technology which uh, Nikola Tesla considered one of his favorite. And uh, there's a lot of uh, experiments online uh, regarding this uh, turbine system. And uh, I've only known a, a couple people who got pretty heavy into it. And what you're going to see is uh, what we're actually planning is a demonstration with a new production-ready prototype. Um, I had a little bit of a uh, unrealistic expectation about having it available for this conference. We still need to have the uh, CNC mill back here uh, leveled and calibrated and all that, but uh, I already purchased all the materials for the housing and the discs and the bearings and all this kind of stuff. And uh, as soon as the conference is over, that's going to be one of the uh, priorities is to do that. And so this is actually different from the demonstration last year, but it's a yeah. turbine that, that uh, Jeremiah has had. Yeah, uh, and there's no vacuum box. So if you've seen the last demonstration, the entire turbine was sitting inside of a box. Jeremiah will, will point that out to you that with a couple little design uh, changes on how the shaft is uh, coming out of the housing, that that vacuum box uh, is uh, not really needed. Um, Jeremiah ha was a uh, student at Embry-Riddle, and then uh, he was there for a while until he decided to pursue his own path with uh, less restrictions, I guess I could say. And uh, he had contacted me, and uh, it was with his for uh, uh, partner, a guy who is uh, uh, recently deceased, that they had come to the conference, had talked about their uh, organization uh, under its name, I Energy Supply, and then uh, he came to the next conference, eventually presented. Last year did a, uh, another, another demo. Each time it got better and better. Uh, the last two were at the uh, Kootenai County Fairgrounds for the uh, ninth and 10th uh, Energy Science and Technology Conference. This one right here, um, this is uh, refined a little bit. This is kind of an, this turbine system here is kind of along the lines of what a, uh, a very uh, beautiful, high precision, highly balanced uh, system is gonna, uh, be coming along and when, when you see it, it's gonna blow your mind um, when, when we're able to uh, uh, show the completed model. Uh, this presentation is gonna be about uh, 90 minutes. Um, and this is updated PowerPoint with the, yeah. with the updates, okay. So um, after the presentation, Jeremiah is going to show a um, demonstration of this. And then uh, if you have any questions, um, he'll be happy to answer them. We're right before lunch, so if it goes a little bit longer, um, it probably won't, but if it does, I think we're gonna be okay with time. Help me welcome uh, Jeremiah Ferwerda. Cool. Come on up. Yep. And, and also, uh, I Energy Supply is no longer there, it's? My Tesla Power. MyTeslaPower.com. New, com. new company. Okay, so Nikola Tesla's thermodynamic transformer. It's his bladeless turbine and pump. So why use the Tesla turbine slash pump? It's a power system like a gas generator that can run on any fuel that burns, such as the, this list here. Um, thermal solar, geothermal. Uh, later we'll be doing more experiments with geothermal. You can use a refrigerant or a different gas that will boil at even lower temperatures than water, of course. It will be a little bit less efficient than running with the water with a, with a slightly higher temperature. But with geothermal, if you have enough area um, that you have s like a copper pipe going through the, the earth back and forth, you can extract a lot of energy from a large area of earth. And in the wintertime, it's so cold outside in a lot of places when there's no sun, you can slowly extract or you can extract energy over time. I mean, pretty actually pretty rapidly, but you just won't be able to uh, it just won't be as efficient, but there's so much energy there um, in geothermal that it doesn't matter if it's like 6% efficient. You can constantly extract the energy from that system. Okay, so we have a demonstration here that we're going to do because a lot of people think that we're using compressed air and they think that we've got compressed air in this side and we've got vacuum in this side. And then they say when we turn the valve on, the pressures will equalize and the reaction will stop. Everybody thinks that this vacuum pump takes more energy than we'll get out of the flow. 
Okay, so now that we have everything vacuumed out of our, um, we have all the air, the ambient air, CO2, oxygen, and nitrogen, pulled out of our system, and it's completely sealed. So over here we have hot water, and over here we have cold water. Now the misconception is, as soon as we turn on this valve, this side will fill up with pressure, and it will no longer have flow, but we want to show that it boils from this side and condenses to our cold side without, uh, without equalizing until the temperatures equalize. Okay, so I'm just going to turn it on a little bit so we can show the process. Here's, this will show, demonstrate the, the boundary layer of the turbine. So this is running on cold steam. This is not this is not uh, compressed air anymore. So 830 hertz for your RPM. When it gets to 1000, it's 60,000 RPM. Um, so yeah, I'll vacuum the air out of the system, then I'll close the valve and then we'll run the turbine. So this is the vacuum on the condenser, and over here will be the pressure on the boiler. It's at, oh, I wanted to point out, there's no pressure in there. So usually you have to, for a steam engine, you have to have positive pressure, which is, we don't have here. Ooh. Okay, so now that we have all the, the air sucked out, or most of it, we'll run the test fast because I do have leaks in the system and the performance will drop pretty rapidly. So that's about 300 hertz. I'm not gonna go very fast, just because I want proper setup here. I wanna, I wanna if I start going 150, 60,000, then it'll start getting dang dangerous for the crowd and everything. Question is, do you else. see a system like this being something that's in continual use, or is it just a temporary, you know, oh, use it for Oh, definitely continuous use. Okay. So, so, well, you might have, like, yeah. like a bank of capacitors or <laughs> batteries or whatever, just to supply a little bit of current instantly when you flip something on, then the turbine has time to, to start speeding up. And if it's something heavy, then the turbine will just take the whole load. Um, after it's up to, to speed. So you might, may or may not want the thing just running all the time. Um, you could have a, a stop and a starting, um, something that would stop and start the turbine and then start supplying the power. Uh, sp capacitors would work. Can you give us an idea? You're, you're trying to come up with a six inch um, yes. uh, turbine. Yep. And then ultimately, I'm, I'm assuming you'll, you'll mate that with a, a six inch pump. Yes. Okay, yeah. and then you'll you'll have the full the full system. Mm -hmm. and, and then we'll test then we'll test using our analytical equipment the right. differences. So and then at, at, at the at the rated speed that you were you would run that at what do you think the the power rating of that is that unit will be? As far as you know, mechanical. I I, I don't know. Um, it's really hard to say, but I'm thinking with the temperature increases. If we have a generator that can match it, well, even like just just low grade temperatures, like for the six like inch e turbine, yeah. we we really won't know how much power it'll put out until we do the, the testing. But I'm I'm thinking, you know, five eight kilowatts. Right. Okay. So so power. that yeah. So in other words, that would be yeah. th that that's a really good start for a home home yeah, power but, plant. Yeah. But but I'm not making any claims for it. No 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 or no. Or no, any I of that. I understand. Yeah, that's so, a, that's a goal. But that's just my that's where I'm kind of right. sitting. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremiah. Awesome.
Thank you.